Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Hanrahan standing alongside Michelle Boss. We're starting with weather today because weather was kind of the big story. It was yeah. wet all across the inland northwest. Kind of a dreary day, really. Big question now, how's tomorrow look? A little bit better <laughs> in that it's not going to rain all day, but we do still have more wet weather in the forecast. And we certainly got plenty of wet weather today. Taking a live look outside downtown, kind of spooky looking out there. It was even spookier looking out uh, by scary wood with the gray clouds and the wet weather and the uh, cold temperatures out there as well. We didn't really warm up much today, but take a look at some of the rainfall totals as of uh, midnight uh, last night. We got about a third of an inch in Spokane, Coeur d'Alene, uh, almost four tenths, Moses Lake and Wenatchee about a third of an inch, but look at Pullman. Boy, you got to give it to those fans out at the WSU game today. An inch and a quarter of rain, and there is more rain in the forecast. Right now in satellite and radar, we are starting to see the first round of showers dying down, though. We're still looking at mostly cloudy skies through the overnight and probably won't see any sun tomorrow morning, but we should get a little bit of a break from the rain dry weather, at least through tomorrow morning. We're on the tail end of some winter weather advisories across the central panhandle and the Blues Mountains. Those will go until 8 o'clock tomorrow morning in those higher elevations above 4,045 feet and across the North Cascade passes Stevens and Snoqualmie Pass, though any additional accumulating snow will likely be above 4,000 feet. So more, more like Stevens Pass. I don't think Snoqualmie Pass is going to um, be too bad tomorrow morning. Currently, temperatures are in the lower 40s. We've been sitting at 40 and 41 degrees for the last eight hours in Spokane. Unfortunately, with the cloud cover overnight, we're not going to see a huge dip in temperatures. Looking at the next 12 hours, we'll probably drop into the middle 30s or bottom out in the middle 30s tomorrow morning, and then be back up in the mid 40s tomorrow afternoon. So another cold day tomorrow with temperatures about 10 degrees below average. More rain tomorrow afternoon, and we should start to dry out by Tuesday. All right, Michelle, thank you very much. Meantime, if you are heading over to the west side of the state this weekend, be ready for possible winter like conditions as snow is expected at higher elevations. The eastbound lanes of I-90 closed briefly this morning due to ice and snow. Rather, that's on Snoqualmie Pass. They have since reopened. Parts of the Cascades could get as much as 18 inches of snow. The National Weather Service says a rain snow mix is expected on Snoqualmie Pass. And we have a traffic alert to pass along to you tonight. Starting at 10 o'clock right about now, I-90 will be reduced to one lane in both directions so crews can clear the Leita Bridge in Spokane. All lanes will reopen at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. WashDOT urges drivers to slow down when approaching work zones. You can find updates on all conditions and closures on CREM.com and the CREM2 mobile app. Spokane County deputies arrested a man who they say kicked in a woman's front door and tried to kick in her neighbor's door. It happened late Thursday night on North Golden Court and East Kathy Lee Avenue in Medical Lake. When deputies showed up to the scene, they quickly arrested 27 year old Cody Wolfley. It's unclear what his motive was, but deputies say he was rambling incoherently and that he, they had what he had rather what they believed to be methamphetamine and heroin on him at the time. He was booked into jail on a variety of charges, including burglary, trespassing, and possession of a controlled substance. A prayer vigil was held at a Deer Park church tonight for Sarah McNeese. The 17-year-old hasn't been seen since October 8th. Police say her parents reported her missing after her car was found in the Spokane Community College parking lot with all of her belongings inside. If you know anything about her whereabouts or have any information that could help, you are urged to contact police. In other news, newly released video shows the moment an Oregon high school security guard and football coach disarmed a student who brought a loaded shotgun to school back in May. Surveillance video shows the Park Rose High School student walk into the school with the shotgun hidden under something in his arms. He nearly bumps into the football coach, but they narrowly miss each other. Seconds later, you can see panic as students run from the classroom. Then we see the coach walk out of the classroom with the shotgun in one hand and the student in the other right there. As he hands that gun to another teacher who called 911, the coach embraces the student. Minutes later, police enter the building with their guns drawn. They found the student and the coach sitting in the hallway together. Earlier this month, a judge sentenced that student to 36 months of probation, as well as immediate mental health and substance abuse treatment. Well, it was a must win game for WSU tonight as they took on Colorado and Pullman. Brenna Green joining us now and coming into tonight, the Cougs were on a three game losing streak. Brenna. Yeah, Mark, that streak is now broken with WSU getting a big 41 to 10 win over the buffs. Here is how it was done. Anthony Gordon had another huge day. He threw for 369 yards and four touchdowns 
on 35 of 51 passing. Most notable for Gordon, he got his top target back in Brandon Arcanado, who hasn't played since midway through the UCLA game. He had a big 44 yard touchdown catch in the fourth and accounted for 109 of Gordon's 369 passing yards. Aesop Winston also had 82. After the game, Leach praised Gordon's ability to always bounce back. He resets really quickly, too, you know. You know, had the one bad series, it was a three and out, and then. Um, you know, but you know what's good about him. You can get him. You know, he's you're one sentence away uh, of talking to him from getting him right back on track. So that part's good, and I also think it uh, impacts the players around him too. Max Borgie also had a huge day for the Cougs. He had 105 yards rushing, which included this 47-yard touchdown. It wasn't just on the ground, though. He also had 57 yards receiving and WSU's first touchdown of the day here. Borgie is a Colorado native, so this game always brings out the best in him. That's something I mark on the calendar. I take it week by week, but when this comes up, it's always an exciting week for me. So I'm just happy with how the team played tonight and uh, that I got the opportunity to go out there and make plays. Now we turn our attention to the other side of the ball for the defense. It felt like a breakthrough night. It, this is one of their three interceptions on the evening coming into this contest. The defense had not had a turnover in two and a half games. Willie Taylor wasn't aware of that stat, but he says getting turnovers definitely makes an impact. For us, especially, uh, it's just um, a lot of more, a lot more energy in the locker room, uh, in the meeting rooms, and uh, you know we haven't had a takeaway. Do we have? I don't even know if we had one last game, but uh, yeah, it's just a lot more. Um, it's a lot more drive for us. The Cougs needed this win and this momentum because their next game is the biggest thus far this season at an Oregon team that is very close to entering into the top 10 ranked teams in the country. That game will kick off in Eugene next Saturday at 730 on ESPN. Back to you, Mark. All right, Brenda, thank you very much. In other news tonight, the Blue Zoo Aquarium opened its doors to children who are visually impaired today to interact and learn about different animals. Graham 2's Brandon Jones was there to experience today with the students and found out what they enjoyed most. Hands-on learning had a deeper meaning this morning at the Blue Zoo Aquarium. A group of blind and low vision students were able to spend some time with animals and get an educational experience on the roles they played in their respective environments. I didn't really know about all sorts of fish and I didn't really know about like iguanas or like stingrays and stuff, but I learned a lot about it. Blue Zoo has had sensory days in the past, but this was the first time working with this group of students. Parents who brought their kids out appreciated the effort and believed the experience was beneficial. Actually just being around the animals itself and learning about something other than the human species is very educational and soothing for them. Any questions the students had were answered right away by staff that were just as happy interacting with them as they were with the animals. To look at a child's face and to see them inspired by holding, an, uh, holding a starfish or petting a stingray for the very first time, I mean, it's incredible. So I'm just walking out of Blue Zoo and I'm not sure who had a better time, the kids or myself, but what I do know is that it was a great environment in there. I mean, they got to hang out, pet stingrays, go into all different types of rooms with reptiles, birds, everything. The whole atmosphere was just amazing. On top of learning about the animals, students got the chance to feed some of them as well. In Spokane, Brandon Jones, Crim 2 News. Still ahead tonight, a Canadian seafood company was hit with a hefty fine after they admitted to selling spoiled fish in the U.S., including right here in Washington.